Good evening, my young people. Um, let's start this video about discussing a little bit about one of my new tools that I still haven't got to use. And you can see it right here. As you can see and probably figure out, it is a boring head. And it is made by Kuroda in Japan. And the model is on the other side, I can show it, you. show it to you in a minute. And it has a boring head, yes. Um, but it also has one pretty nice feature, because it's also a facing head. Um, you can rotate this. And when you rotate this, it should actually move the slide. Um, it has a place, uh, I guess, this hole in here, you're supposed to put in uh, a piece of bar and then clamp it against something. And when the spindle is turning, this is staying stationary and uh, there is a gear system that is driving uh, from this rotating thing to here. And by that way it can rotate. And I guess that's pretty neat feature. Uh, at the moment it's not doing anything, um, but I know that's how it works, because I just took this off and there is a gear system under there. Uh, I still don't know how, how it works, but I guess I will figure out. So this is pretty nice, looking forward to getting to use this. Uh, there is one disadvantage about this. And it is that it has a Morse 4 shank, and right now it's held in a um, BT40 to MT4 adapter. And the problem with this, as you can see, it's very, very long. This is like 10 centimeters, 100 millimeters. And that's bad. But I guess what I'm gonna do, well, I can use this in the universal um, vertical head if I have to. Uh, I just cannot take very, um, very deep cuts with it. Um, but what I can do is, um, actually I don't have a BT50 to 4 adapter at the moment, but I need to buy one so I can put this on my horizontal spindle, because it has a 50 taper. And that will be a very short adapter. It will be, I guess, almost until here. So. That should be pretty rigid. <laughs> and the head is pretty rigid. So I guess it's really not taking full advantage of this head with this long shank. <laughs> okay, I guess this is all I have to say about this one. Okay, now let's get back to the lathe. As you can see, I have the spindle put back together. Um, it's on just like it's supposed to be. Um, but there is a problem. I have a piece of wood and using these pretty short um, pliers to lift up the spindle. It has almost 500 of play. And that is having this tightening knot as tight as it goes. So this is the gear that has threads on the inside diameter on it. And I'm using this, this tool to rotate the gear. And um, it's just not coming anymore. I tried to hit it with my copper hammer, but it just won't go anymore. And uh, by hitting, I could actually get it to move, uh, comparing this to this, uh, I got it to move two teeth and um, it had no effect on this, so I'm guessing it's just the, the, the knot starting to give away a little bit. So the bearing is not tightening anymore. And I've been reading the Russian forums about this, the chipmaker forum, <coughs> and I know what the problem is now. Um, maybe it is caused by uh, the 
wedding that I put in, not made <coughs> to, uh, not made tight enough. And maybe it's something else, but I know how to fix it. And uh, I guess I will show it to you when I get the spindle off again. And let me tell you, I'm not extremely happy at the moment, uh, because it was quite a wrestle to get the spindle back in. And now uh, I have to do it all over again. Just have to hope that it really helps. Okay, so I will now start pulling the spindle out again. And then I can show you what's the problem. And now I'm gonna say a few words about this trust bearing. Some of you may have read the comments on my uh, last video about this lathe. And um, there was one guy commenting about this trust bearing. And, <clears throat> and he was saying that um, in this flange that I repaired, maybe this rear race had a press fit. Um, and so um, he thought and the bearing was uh, the bearing failed and because um, the rear ray started spinning against this this flange um, so first of course the, the balls got so worn that the friction was bigger uh, rotating from the balls than rotating between the rear rays and this flange and that is a possible case I think but I don't I don't believe in it. Um, firstly because um, if there was a press fit housing for this phrase uh, there would have been some traces of it left because there's no way that about four four or even five millimeters were worn out out of this piece. So I guess that's the biggest reason why. And also one other thing is that if there is a press fit on this piece, um, then it should be located uh, perfectly to the center of this spindle shaft. And it wasn't. The only thing that is centering this piece are the six screws, these ones, that are, ho are holding it in place. And uh, I know uh, that when installed perfectly, properly, this bearing should have a press fit housing for this rear race. But in this case, the engineers who designed this lathe, they uh, didn't think it's necessary to put to do this on this application and so I'm not gonna modify this rear piece to do that because I actually know what was the problem with the rear bearing and it is that it was installed backwards let me show you here you can see the rear race and you can see that it's pretty broke and there is even a little crack in here. And I don't know if you are familiar with thrust bearings. Um, of course they are like normal bearings for radial loads. But uh, the balls are... Well that layout is just a little different. Because this bearing only takes the axial forces. And only in the direction of pushing the spindle flow from right to left. So this this bearing takes the load when you take a heavy chip and uh, the tool produces both radial loads and axial loads. loads. And uh, when the tool is pushing the workpiece into the chuck, it is also pushing the spindle backwards. And this is what takes the force of that. <coughs> So, uh, the thrust bearing works uh, or attaches to the lathe so that the front race um, has a press fit to the spindle shaft. It's a pretty tight press fit. And then there are of course the balls and the cage. And then the rear race uh, has a slide fit uh, 
uh, it has a very very sloppy fit on the spindle shaft so it is not supposed to touch the spindle shaft at all uh, and it is resting on on this piece now and that should keep it in place and what happened with this bearing is that this is actually the front race it's supposed to be the front race and you can see on the inside it is also a little worn uh, so what happened is that it was put on the rear race on the rear and the rear race was in the front so what happened is that this bearing was spinning with the spindle shaft and it was grinding itself to the to this piece so from the second that it was installed and the spindle started for the, for the first time i would say the bearing was already destroyed and it never worked as it should have worked and also what happened <coughs> This gear also has a press fit to the shaft and I guess this is supposed to uh, serve kind of as a snap ring mm, to keep the spindle in place. Um, so the spindle was also pushing the front race um, and it tried to, uh, to move the load by the balls to the rear race and at some point it was spinning on the shaft and at some point it was spinning against this flange and I was lucky that it didn't spin on the shaft too much because there is almost no wear on the shaft but from the inside of this race you can see that it has spun also on the shaft but I guess it's also pretty evident that it has been spinning on the rear flange it has even some pieces welded on it this is pretty <laughs> catastrophic failure, I would say. But now, when I turn this shaft, this is how the bearing should be working. Okay, I guess this is enough of the spindle. I mean the thrust bearing. Oh, one more thing. Uh, actually, Factory Dragon, when we went to see this lathe, we took the spindle box, uh, I, I mean the spindle, spindle box cover off, uh, Factory Dragon saw about five seconds later, after five seconds of watching that, the rear bearing was gone. And actually, right away he knew what was wrong with it. So he knew that it was installed the wrong way. And it took me this long to figure that out. So I guess he's, he's, pretty, he's a pretty experienced with machines. Okay, and now, as I told you, the spindle has some radar run out, and I now have to take it off again. Okay, let's get to it. And also that commenter was completely right about um, that it would be a better idea to use a roller bearing as a thrust bearing, opposed to this ball bearing. But since I have this ball bearing, I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, but I'm gonna use it. Um, of course, also, originally this slate has a ball bearing, so it should be good enough. But, sure, roller bearing would have been a better, better choice for this application. Okay, I rechecked the play, the radio play, and it actually is 800, which is pretty much. Uh, so let's see if we can fix it or not. Well, the problem actually you can see here, it is that ring you see right there. That is kind of a shim that goes, it sits between the flange, uh, I mean the shoulder, that you can see on the right side of it. Uh, and the other side sits on the, uh, the main bearing in the race and that's keeping it from tightening anymore. So when I take the spindle off, you can see it again. But maybe now you can understand a little better where the ring is and what it does. 
Okay, the spindle is now back on my table, as you can see. And actually, believe it or not, but it took me exactly 10 minutes to get it off. From starting the, the operation to getting it on my table again. So, compared to the one full working day that it took me to get it off the first time, I guess some improvement has happened. Which is good, luckily. And now let's talk a little bit about this bearing assembly. Uh, the first piece to go in is this sim piece. And it sits against this shoulder. And the next thing to go in is the spindle bearing. And it goes against... Uh, it goes against the sim. And you can see it has a little bit of a gap now. Some light is coming through. And that gap is used to uh, adjust the bearing. And now let me tell you how to adjust this bearing. Um, uh, there is no taper on the on the rolls or on the um, the outside of the inner ring or the inside of the outer ring. There is no taper. Um, the other rays can slide freely on and off each side. So this is not a taper bearing. It cannot be tightened by that. So how is it possible to tighten a bearing like this or adjust it? And the answer is that it has a very slight taper in the, um, the inside ring, the inside of the inside ring. And how it happens is that the same, ter the same taper, of course, is on the spindle. You can very barely see it. And now, when the bearing goes in, uh, of course, the taper smats. And now, actually, when you put this in here, and then uh, this, this knot goes to these threads, uh, you can actually tighten and force the bearing to go deeper into the uh, the taper and that actually forces the um, the inner race to expand a little bit and that is how you can take a few hundreds or a few thousands uh, clearance off but what happens now see there is still the gap but when this piece goes in I will drop it slightly now. No more gap. Zero gap. And at this point it still has 800s of play. So at the moment there is no way to tighten it. So what I'm gonna have to do now uh, to get this bearing to go a little bit deeper into the taper, I need to grind this sim a little thinner. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. And I calculated um, by the taper um, and the, the, the play and um, I mean the taper and the play, yes. Uh, I calculated uh, how much I have to take off this and it is pretty much, it's over half a millimeter. I guess what's happening now, it is possible that um, the bearing will not even center properly on the spindle shaft because it's not going deep enough. So maybe the original bearing has a little tighter inside ring. But something certainly has happened. Okay, now I guess it's time to figure out how to um, take a little bit off that shim. And, by the way, uh, to my knowledge, uh, the sim can neither be too thin, because what might happen is that the bearing will climb to the taper somehow. I don't know even if this is possible, so if you know, please let me know what you think. But I, as far as I know at the moment, the bearing can climb to the taper and actually uh, make it too tight and then make it lock and wear down. 
So, um, as far as I know, you have to be pretty um, accurate on how much you take off that gym. But if you think it's not possible for the bearing to climb, I will just take out like one millimeter out of it. Uh, to me it sounds pretty amazing if it can climb. So, what do you think? I guess next thing you will gonna see, which is not in this video, uh, but it will be about grinding or milling or turning this sim a little thinner. Okay, thank you for all of your comments and again I try to answer all of them. And please give me some ideas about this one. Okay, thank you for watching and commenting and liking and see you again. Bye. And I think now I'm gonna use my tool grinder for the first time ever to do anything serious. I'm gonna use this rotary, uh, I mean this magne magnetic table and uh, this tool grinder and a different stone than this to grind off the material of this shimpies. That's gonna happen in the next video.